So, last time we met, uh, we talked about, uh, it was a lesson that you had done, and you said that next year you wanted to flip it. Yes. But we're going to talk about maybe doing a experiment with flipping something this year. Okay, sounds good. Um, so, because you've never done any of the flip stuff. No, I've not. Um, did you know that flip, why do they call it flip? I thought it was because you flip it around, so instead of teaching in class, they're teach or you're teaching them while they're at home. Or they're That's teaching what themselves. I thought, too. Notice how I made one copy. It was flipped. Oh, yeah. That's only because oh, the, that. the copier outsmarted me. Um, flexible environment, learning culture, intentional content, and professional educator. So it turns out there are standards for flipping one's classroom. Who knew? Of course it stands for something. And what I also didn't know, but you will find interesting, I think, um, it turns Bloom's taxonomy on its head. Interesting. Um, we're so used to, in class, their first exposure is what we tell them in class. Mm -hmm. but with flipped, their first exposure is not what we tell them in class. So we get them at a little more advanced stage. So it's all, I mean, it, it makes for a much richer environment. I mm -hmm. actually, I think before you were here, um, I experimented with flipping my classroom a little bit. And a lot of work, yeah. uh, but really cool results. Um, but yeah, Bloom's taxonomy. So at home, before class, uh, remembering and understanding, during class, applying and analyzing, and after class, evaluating and creating. Interesting. Yeah, I had no idea all of that was there. And I, while I was thinking through, okay, it fits the blooms, I decided to see if it um, fits to the 5e model. Yes. And it fits the 5e model really well. So. So here's how one. I, I took the liberty of coming up with a plan of how one flips one classroom, okay. and so let's just kind of walk through that. Um, uh, and you can read as well as I can, but I'm going to read to you. Perfect. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, first step is plan. Uh, figure out which lesson in particular you want to flip. Outline the key learning outcomes and a lesson plan. So, can you think in the somewhat future this year, but not too terribly far out? And some lessons are better for this than others. Right. So, can you think of something on the horizon that might be a good candidate? Yes, we have some. Um equilibrium stuff coming up that'll probably be january so it's not like super soon horizon but in the next yeah actually that nine weeks it's november yeah that's yeah, a, true that's, <laughs> yeah that's right here so um okay so when i first tried flipping my classroom i just kind of let the camera roll and thought i'd figure it out mm -hmm. and it doesn't work that way okay. you really got to plan out what you're going to say and frame the shot and i mean i know you got drama background so you this will probably come more naturally to you than me but um you have to really kind of script your lesson yeah that, that's your ba drama background will come in handy um and so so you'll need to record the lesson and it is yeah. don't anticipate that it will be just as easy as delivering it in front of students because at a very subtle level you get feedback from students maybe right. it's not so subtle but um <laughs> You can figure out, you read their faces, mm -hmm. if it's working or not. You're talking into an empty room, and there is no way of figuring out if it's working or not. So it's a, it's a really strange beast the first time you yeah, did it. Yeah, I bet. Um, but we have, in terms of resources, we got this swivel gizmo, which mm -hmm. is really pretty cool. Um, and they'll let you use it anytime you want. So, so step two is get something recorded. Okay. Um, step three is share it. So the easy thing to do is to share it on YouTube. Um, but there are better ways. Are you familiar with um, uh, a website called Play Pause It? No. Peter Santa Maria turned me on to it. Actually, when my daughter had his class, she would come home and do it. She she pronounced it Play Pause It, P A U S E, but the website is P O S I T, pause it, as in to ask a question. So what happens is you can take a, a video that you uploaded to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you can decide that at two minutes and 13 seconds, you want to stop it and ask them a question. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be multiple choice, but um, mm -hmm. that, well, actually, I guess it, there's a feature of it where if it's multiple choice, they have to get it right before they can go on. If it's some kind of free response, it, you know, gotcha. it, yeah, it, yeah. it obviously can't grade that. Um, but it is a 
what you don't want your kids doing, and I found this is a problem, um, they will turn your video on and then get on their phones, do, uh, do a, a thousand different things. Yeah. So this is some way of making them focus in. So you, you'll need to climb that hill, that, that um, how do we share it in such a way that the kids are, that we've incentivized them using it. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying play pause it is the only resource, but I think it's a, it's a good one that you at least ought to investigate. Yeah, so. that's interesting. Um, yeah. And he uses it for his AP classes and just swears by it. So. Um, step number four, uh, you got to change. Uh, now that your students have viewed your lesson, they're prepared to actually go more in depth than ever before. So what was homework is now classwork. I get you use Quest with these kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, do y'all ever do it in class? Um, only if there's a substitute or if we magically finish early one day, yeah. but I don't really build in Quest days. So if they were here in the lecture park first, then you could work with them yeah yeah i am in my physics 2 class i'm able to spend time letting them work quest there and it's amazing how much more collaborative it is than when they're doing it alone or doing it in small groups at right. home so i think you'll really like that part because you can you know this little squad will say i need help with number 12 and then someone over there needs help with number 12 and then mm -hmm. you're doing number 12 for the entire room and you just i don't know if you're like me when they email me with Help me with number 12 it gets pretty tedious after you answer the same question yes but, but this solves all that so right. um, so you can i mean you just have to plan for it but what was the homework is now the classwork so um so step five and six says group and regroup let me just read those and we'll talk about them both together an effective way to discuss the topic is to separate into groups where students are given a task to perform it says write a poem a play or make a video okay this obviously is not tailored to sciences right but um, grouping students for some kind of review. So maybe you have them, you throw out a quest problem, this group works number two and this work number four or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have that luxury if the classroom is filled with lecture. So. Right. Or uh -huh. like even in AP, it could be FRQs and we could have more actual... AP oh, exam practice. That's a very good idea. Because I wish I had more time to do more FRQs and practice AP multiple choice questions in class. Well, yeah, because you're not, especially because you have the secure issue. Right, right? with, the, with oh. the multiple choice. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, so this will free up time to actual, so they can actually practice the FRQs. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do it. They can do it alone, or they can do it in a group of a few. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really... I'm liking this. Um, last step, it says regroup. Um, get the class back together to share the individual group's work with everyone. Ask questions, dive deeper than ever before. So I guess you could have one group working on one FRQ and another working on a different one, mm -hmm. or they could all be working on the same FRQ. Yeah. So with that kind of plan in mm -hmm. front of you, do you think... Is that? Is that a bullet that fits in your gun, as my grandma used to say? Yes. <laughs> I think for sure, especially, yeah, I think them being able to actually see and think about the information, and I think that will help, too, because a lot of times when I lecture, I'll ask questions, and I think we might have spoke about this the last time we talked. I'll have one or two One or kids. off video, but yeah. Yeah. I'll have one or two kids that are the first ones to always answer, and no one else gets the time to process. So this will take that away as well because they can process answering like with the play pause it thing. And then they, they at least have to think about it on some level. And I feel like it will help them become more independent yep. and then come into class and practice. And it kind of puts the ownership on them because if they don't spend the time watching the video or learning it at home, they're not going to be able to perform in class. Yeah. Okay. Um um Cool. Actually, sound like a plan. The only other thing we ought to do is there are some teachers around here who do have kind of semi-flipped classrooms. Mm -hmm. You know that five or six years ago, we all thought we we're going to completely flip our classrooms and we're never going to lecture in class again. Well, that's just really not reality. Yeah. Um, but um, if I were to arrange, I can cover your class to give you some time to go look at someone who's doing a flipped classroom and... You can just kind of hang out there. 
Yeah, that'd be yeah, awesome. We got, we got six period, but of course, I guess you can go first period during your planning. Yeah, true. Um, and the administration has assured me that we can free up time however we need to. So. Um, do you know any teachers that are doing flipped? Um, not off the top of my head. Yeah, we've got four or five here. Um, okay. Let me, I'll, I'll reach out and see who would be cool with you sitting in there and we'll arrange a time. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Um, so if we're going to do a lesson that's coming up in January, you said equilibrium. Mm -hmm. um, we have three weeks, believe it or not, until Thanksgiving. And then I think there's four weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Oh, that's exciting. So, yeah, yeah, true. Um, so we, if I was able to find out a way to get you in someone's class to watch them uh, sometime in the now to Thanksgiving window, yeah. do you think you could get a lesson or two flipped in the Thanksgiving to Christmas window? Oh, definitely, I should be able to, yeah. All right, cool. I'll help any way I can. Awesome. Thank I you. appreciate you letting me coach you. Absolutely. Thank you.